Hi, I'm going to be doing an experiment to determine the magnetic flux density of this major magnet here using a search coil. And I'll be comparing the results of my search coil experiment with an experiment I've already done and made a video of where I used a current balance method to determine the flux density so we can compare the, the values I got for that. So as I say, I'll be using this device. This is called a search coil. Uh, it's, a, it's a very small, tightly bound coil, so just in there we've got 5,000 turns. This, this search coil has 5,000 turns, so it's a very small cross-sectional area there. Uh, that's what it is, in essence. As you can see, it is connected to this. This is a picoscope, which is an oscilloscope that connects to my laptop over here. And you can see this is the readout coming from that. So we've got a way of determining the induced EMF in my coil on here. So as you can see, as I'm moving it around near this magnet, you can see I'm getting some little ripples there. The faster I do it, then the, the higher the peaks become. So yeah, that's giving me the EMF and it's scrolling through time. So what I'll be able to do is uh, place my coil in the magnetic field here. So I'll be aiming to get it pretty centralized in the magnetic field and then what you do with the search coil is simply pull it out very quickly. Okay, and we can see we get that nice sharp peak there. And we analyze the peak to work out the air under the peak, and that's how we can determine the flux density. So we get the area under it, we do some uh, calculations. So this is a representation of a peak here. So we get a peak, which is voltage against time. So the area of that underneath that peak represents the EMF multiplied by the change in time that's elapsed there. And so when, when we take our Faraday's law equation, we have delta MBA, delta flux linkage, it, over delta T is equal to the EMF. So if we rearrange that, then we get, so if we rearrange this equation, for EMF times delta T, we get delta MBA. And then rearrange that further. So EMF times delta T is the area of the triangle, so that we've determined that from the peak. And then we uh, divide that by the number of turns and the cross-sectional area of the coil. So in terms of measurements that need to be made, we need the N value, and we would need to measure the cross-sectional area of our coil. So usually what I do when I do this experiment is I usually use a digital vernier caliper and I go from the midpoint of this side of the coil to the midpoint of that coil to find out the diameter and work out the cross-sectional area from that. So I'm kind of getting a, a, a mean area, if you like, between the outer and the inner points of the coil there. And someone's taken my digital uh, vernier caliper. I don't know where, who's got it at the moment. So I'm actually going to do that in the analysis video, take that measurement and uh, that will all go into the spreadsheet. So anyway, yeah, that's, those are the measurements that need to be made. I'll just show you how I can use this software to get some readings and then we'll actually get a, uh, get a re proper reading. So as I said, we put the place of the coil in the field and then we pull it out very quickly. That's giving me a negative one. I'm just going to switch that around so I get a positive. And we can do it with time. There we go. So that's my peak there. So what I can do with this software is I can zoom in on that peak. So I can get a nice and large view. Uh, so that's my peak. You can see it's rough, it can be roughly taken as a triangle. So if you take that point there, take some straight lines down here, we can estimate it as a triangle. In order to help me do that, to actually get fairly accurate readings, if I switch to the cursor here, we can click on part, points of the peak and we can get readings. So this is 3.671 volts at 2.546 seconds. The, although the time in this case at the peak is not too important, we'd be more interested in the times here. Um, the other thing that I would do, because I can take accurate readings at different points, is I can choose the part of the peak that approximates most closely to a triangle, and then I'll use the triangle 
formula, half base times area, in order to determine the area as closely as possible. So what I'll do for that is you can see there's a lot more curvature around here and here. So there's quite a lot of curvature there. So if we can eliminate that, we could take this point here, for example, these points here. So we could just work out the difference in time between these two. That gives me the base. And then I can also know which, what the voltage is at this point. So it's 516 millivolts and then find out the difference between that and the peak value, 3.676. Uh, so work out the difference that gives me the height of the triangle. So in, in short order, that, what we're gonna do is collect the peak properly, and then I'll, I'll save the file, and when I do the analysis, I'll actually take all, the, take all the readings, put them into my spreadsheet, and we'll work out what the area is and then we can work out the flux density. So I'm putting the search coil in the magnet here. I'm going to wait until the trace is over on this on the left side of the screen. Pull it out. Stop. Okay, so we save this. I'll just zoom in on my peak here. So this is my peak. So going up to about just over 3.1 volts there and baseline is probably about 500 millivolts also. So we'll use that to determine the flux density. So watch video two and you'll see how I analyze this and then compare it to the value I got for current balance.